Um, we already introduced my library, so this is not going to be just an introduction. We will have to do a recap to kind of uh, remind you guys what we're going to be talking about for my library. But the purpose here is to get into some of the details that just couldn't fit into the earlier presentation and hopefully to answer a lot of questions that you might have thought of when you were watching that presentation. Um, but there might be some time for questions at the end of this anyway if we didn't cover something. So let's get started. We're going to do, uh, we're going to recap. <clears throat> We're going to go a little deeper into the My Library interface. We're going to talk about shortcuts, self-service, visualization pages, and the new button style quick views. Um, there are other things in 7.2 that we already talked about. They're not covered by this particular presentation. We're just focusing on the new dive port user interface changes. All right, so, so let's just do the quick recap. Uh, in, the, in My Library, um, which is when you opt into it, uh, it displays a bar across the top, the library bar. And that shows you the current page, nearby pages, and allows you to change pages much more quickly than some of the other interfaces we've used before. The pop-up, when you click the big button, you get your, your entire site uh, in, in these different sections that you can collapse. Um, the sections have icons for special pages or special features of your site. Uh, and within a section, we have shelves and buttons. <clears throat> a little bit louder. A little louder, OK. When I start hearing my own voice coming back, I get to worried that I'm, uh, that I'm, I'm getting too loud. OK. All right, so it, the menu portlet is another change in 7.2. Uh, we had it before, obviously, but it, it gained a new mode, the gallery mode. And the menu portlet in gallery mode is, is just showing bigger buttons, which makes it good for screenshots. We have the shortcut system. Uh, Diveport had bookmarks before. When you migrate to shortcuts, they move to, the, to dive line so that other products later on will be able to use them. Uh, and, uh, and they're easier to reach in the My Library interface. Shared folders allow you to share your shortcuts within a team with other people, uh, or even as an administrator, you could create a shared folder to highlight certain pages, put them in that folder, and then other users can't change those, but they can see them. Um, uh, the self-service interface in Diveport has changed for 7.2. Um, it is easier to create uh, multiple stamps at once in a user page, uh, it is easier to, uh, to get straight to content in that page without having to think too much about the display types. If you're going to use the default stamp type in the factory config, then you, you don't even have to choose a display type. And then the quick views. Uh, calendar quick views are, of course, uh, updated in 7.2, but the, the new style here is the button style quick view, and we'll get to some demos of that in a moment. Um, so that is the, the recap, and I'm now going to let Keith take over and walk us through some of it. <coughs> Okay, as you can see, here's my library, and it's a typical page with, with a lot of stamps on it. Um, but what I know is that I can come up here and look at my library and have these uh, various options to choose from. So if I, I know that I want to look at general, I want to look at an executive dashboard, I can immediately go to that, and it comes up very quickly. Um, I can, you know, again, move down a little bit further, choose something else. I'm able to navigate from one to another. Um, as you noticed, as I'm choosing one of those shelves, um, like George's, George's dashboard, you'll see everything that is related to it. So also what's on that shelf, and I'm able to choose very quickly up, um, against that. And of course, this is just like Diveport as, as we know it. Um, all these actions are clickable. I can click on it and, and do everything that I've, that I've done before, really what this is is just a, a new UI element. There's a couple of other things that we see. Um, we see some icons, so sometimes it doesn't necessarily, you don't want to have a button for it, um, but I might want to you know, create uh, a button for, for a particular page and it can bring me somewhere. In this case, it was suggesting that I might want to create a new, um, a new measure, like inpatient charges, and I could choose something else, but of course, when I do that, I'll say, okay, I'll just go ahead and create a really simple chart here. Um, and, I, and I can keep coming back to this. Uh, visualizations, actually, a lot of this we're going to come back to in a moment, so. Yeah. All right. Great. So now let's go into some of the details and some of the things that, you know, maybe uh, you wouldn't know just from watching the demo. So. <clears throat> uh, when you upgrade to 7.2, uh, 
You don't need to use my library. I mentioned this before. It, it just, you, if you upgrade to 7.2, not much will change in Diveport. Um, and that is because a lot of these features are things you have to go in and configure. You'll have to create a new, you know, quick view portlet to change the button or something like that. But my library is a thing that you can switch in the interface mode at the portal settings or on a per environment level if you want to try it out without changing your entire site. You might make a copy of an environment, <coughs> set it to my library, and then see what it's like. Um, <coughs> the, you, on a production site, you wouldn't want to mix this my library and non my library environments because <coughs> the my library environment will have the pop up and it will list all environments, including my library environments and, and other. Uh, and then what might happen is the user would click on one of the other ones and the, the whole interface changes. You know, my library is gone because now it's back to simplified UI. So the per environment setting we expect to be used for testing purposes and you would generally, once you like it, once you're ready to move to it, you turn everything on. You turn it on at the portal level. Um, within that pop-up, we, we talked about the sections. A section in the pop-up corresponds to an environment in the portal. Uh, and uh, so if you want a new section, you create a new environment. In this way, environments become more of an interface feature in my library than before. Before environments were more like projects, like a place you put something and, you know, maybe some users have access, maybe they don't, but you, it's part of this big pull down and so generally you don't, you know, maybe your users don't always go to that pull down to find stuff. Well now, in my library, each new environment is a section and so it, becomes more exposed to them, right? They're going to see that this section exists. They're going to see some of the pages inside of it um, before they even have to find it in the pull down. So that's important to keep in mind uh, as a migration uh, issue. It, sections can, uh, in this example here, they all started out expanded. You can customize whether they are expanded or collapsed at the beginning uh, because maybe you want some of them to be collapsed by default so that they're just not front and center uh, to your users. They might be something you want the user to have to click to expand. And in between opening and closing the pop-up, the, the collapse and expand state is remembered during your session. So if mm, the first time I open it, everything's expanded, I can collapse things, close the pop-up and open it again, they'll still be collapsed. Uh, within the section, uh, we talked about the shelf. Uh, each shelf is a top-level page in the environment. So in your current portal, in an environment, you'll have a, a number of top level pages. If you're using simplified UI, then in the sidebar, these will be the first things you see when you bring the sidebar up. Those top level pages are turned into shelves. Now, what's strange about that, right, is that some of those top level pages might have portlets in them. And they might be destination pages where you would want to go there and see the portlets. Well, in my library, that's not as much the case, right? You don't, you can't visit a shelf as a page. So in a way, we're, we're kind of using the structure of the portal to help organize the structure of my library. Now I see this as kind of a transition um, period. I mean, I think we're gonna keep using it that way, but in the future when you create a new my library environment, this won't be a problem for you because you'll just, you'll be creating new shelves, you'll be creating new buttons in those shelves. The interface will be, you know, different in the future for creating content. Um, and in that case, this weird discrepancy of having a top level page that has portlets in it won't be an issue. But if you're migrating, that's a good thing to keep in mind. Any top level page you have with content, you'll want to move to a sub page so that it shows up as a button. And that way you have more control over which shelves exist and what buttons are inside of them. Uh, and so if you are an administrator and you're going to be making changes to this site, uh, migrating your pages to my library, um, currently, you'll use the sidebar for that, just like in simplified UI. Your end user doesn't see the three dashes. The end user's not going to bring up in the sidebar to find things. They're going to use the library pop-up. But currently, if you want to create a new page or you want to move pages around, the sidebar is the way to do it. So it's the familiar interface there. Uh, I, sometime in the future, I imagine we'll, we'll add features to the pop-up itself so the administrators can just click to create a new page. And yeah, so uh, to reiterate, you, you, you can't just turn my library on and just hope for the best. You're going to need to move some pages around. <clears throat> uh, and then, okay, and then that's, this is a transition now. It's a short time. <laughs> so you can push the next one. Yeah, we'll, we'll just emphasize a couple of, a couple of those points. Uh, one, one thing you should note is right now as I'm logged in, I'm a user. So you don't see the ability for me to edit the page uh, as a user wouldn't. 
And as Jamie was just talking about, those three dashes, sometimes referred to as a hamburger, is not there. So that, that's gone away. Um, yeah, to continue, um, so shortcuts. Um, currently, if you have bookmarks, and few, we know few people actually have the bookmarks, but if you do, uh, the, those bookmarks are stored on the dive ports portal database. Um, it's stored, it's part of the, of the dive port. It's really not part of the user found in the dive line. Shortcuts, however, are stored with the dive line. And this is to an advantage because what we hope to see in the future is that these shortcuts will be available not only in the dive port, but also in a dive tab, uh, you know, on a, on a tablet or a phone, but also possibly in ProDiver. Um, bookmarks are only a point to the dive port pages. Um, so there, it, it could also be shorts, uh, shortcuts to markers or other dive tab pages. So there's a lot of possibilities for the shortcuts to come. Uh, so in terms of migration, uh, the administrator needs to enable that in the portal settings, and the dive port automatically migrates to the shortcuts. Uh, there is a requirement, and that is, and we do suggest this, is that your dive line would require a home project. We also require uh, home directories, because that's where those shortcuts are going to get stored. Uh, and then create and shared. We'll get into that, too. Okay, so. Um, so what exactly is the shortcut and how do I use it? Well, you saw that it was coming down and I was choosing something from one of these shelves. Like maybe I, this one was today and I like that. And I say, well, this is really important to me, but now uh, the buttons that I see up here are today and yesterday and this month, but I want this part of my today, my, my shortcut. So as a user, I come over to this icon. That icon is not visible on the screen. Oh, bummer. Uh, Oh, we'll, 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 we'll do a little trick here. Whoops, sorry. And we'll get that to work. Something about the resolution? Yep, it's a little bit outside. Oh, wow. That's way outside. Okay, anyway, so that everyone can see that. There's the little shortcut icon. And we're going to click on that. And you'll notice what happened is my shelf just changed to my shortcuts. And now I have a shortcut up here, and that is... Uh, the current today shortcut. And you can keep doing this. I mean, you can create as many shortcuts as you want, but the, really the idea would be I only have a couple of shortcuts. Those, those are the things that I'm really interested in doing on a daily basis. And I'm sorry, I, I chose something at random and wasn't paying attention to what it was. So here's um, inpatient trends. Perfect. And I want to create a shortcut for that. I'll go ahead and add a shortcut. Now. What if I want to change some of these things? I mean, maybe I added too many, and in fact, I have something I'm not even sure what that is. Well, um, I can edit the shortcuts. And as, a, as I've already pointed out, I don't see edit up here. And again, I'm not an administrator. A non-administrator wouldn't think to do that. But if I click on shortcuts, and then right next to shortcuts, I see edit. So I click on edit. I can change the position of these if I want, just by dragging. Or I can remove something. Uh, like this one, I'll just say uh, delete. And I get a warning, sure. I want to delete that. And then here's one current today, too. Um, and I'm going to rename it by editing it. And the rename, I'll just say it's, you know, I don't know, my today. And that's it. So that is now my shortcut. And I think I'm going to put, whoops, I think I will put that one. Oh, I have to hit the done. Well, in any case. So here's my today, and it comes right back. So we really think that this is how most of your users will, um, will use this. In fact, as a trainer, we think that we will have some sort of a program where we'll sit down with you and your customers and actually sit with that user and say, what is most important to this person? They're a nurse, they're in a cardiology unit. So of the, all the different pages I have, what are the three or four things that is most important to them? And we'll help them set up their shortcuts. Okay. Well, I'll just throw one thing on there is that, um, is that shortcuts do remember the quick view values uh, from the page. So if you go to a page and you change a quick view, save the shortcut, it comes back to the same state. So that's important. Um, and also, shortcuts is not always tied to my library. If you upgrade to 7.2, you can migrate to shortcuts without 
using my library. So those are two independent features. However, my library is where the, you get the cool bar with you know the shortcuts being at the top of the list. If you're going to do it without my library, you're going to use the, the what we used to call the bookmarks dialog. So it's a pop-up dialog that lists the shortcuts, and you could do similar things there. <clears throat> All right. So let me do. A, I'll show you the what we're calling a visualization page for a moment. Uh, in the section here, hospital operations, I've got a couple of icons, and one of them is called visualizations. Now, just, these icons, uh, we talked a little bit about that. That's something you, as an administrator, can create. You just create a top-level page, just like it would be a shelf. You customize, you edit that page settings, and you can, there's a pull-down for you to choose how, what we do with that page. One of the options is to just show it as a shelf. The other option is for that page to become a little icon. So you can add as many of those as you need. You could come up with your own reasons for having certain icons next to your sections. This one we made is what we're calling a visualization page. And visualization, visualization page, it's going to be hard if I say that too many times. Uh, it's, it's a menu portlet in gallery mode, and it just you know, shows people examples of the kinds of pages they can find in this section. And so this is purely for uh, help purposes, for like, you know, to help someone come up to speed. Um, just gives them an overview of, of sorts of things they might find. And if you're going, doing a demo, this is a good place to start because you can, pe people can see the screen they're about to get to before they click to go there. Uh, and so if I click there, I can go there. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, it's, a, it's called gallery mode in the menu portlet. Um, it has more space for screenshots. Uh, and then the visualization page is this concept of making a help page out of a menu portlet in gallery mode. Uh, we, to give you kind of a little bit of how the, uh, you know, how this stuff is made in the background, this, we originally wanted the screenshots to be live, you know, like to show you what you really will see when you click to go there. And then we started to think about the technical ramifications of that, right? For one thing, uh, I really don't want to, um, to create screenshots of person A's view of this screen, of this uh, page and then show it to person B. Even if it's a small screenshot, they might be getting, leaking some information out of that. So that means we would have had to have done it for every single user for every single page. And at scale, we decided that that was just not feasible. Um, so we may come up with some other scheme later on. But for now, what, ha what you do is you would just go visit that page in some safe mode that you think is OK, right? It's showing data that's, that's not a problem. Take a screenshot, and then you uh, put the screenshot into the menu portlet. Um, you can also, of course, that means you can blur the shot later if you want to, or you can choose a, a big icon if you don't think showing the, the content is, is reasonable. Uh, and another feature of the menu portlet in gallery mode is you can make a page that has an embedded video, and then you can link to that page through the menu portlet with a little video icon. So people are finding this is a new way for us to start giving, making videos available, and it helps tr to train people. Uh, looks like there's a question. Yeah, if, yeah. exactly. The uh, sorry, the, the, the question is for these menu por portlet screenshots, um, if you go back to the original page and change something, you know, you're going to need to update the screenshot. And I guess it depends on how different it is, right? Um, if, it, if you drastically change that page, I, you probably will want to change the screenshot. Uh, and if that's going to be something you're going to do often, then you might want to make the screenshot a little more abstract in the first place so that it's not a concern. Uh, and you can still use, uh, the regular menu portlet, I guess, without the screenshots, that might be okay to save you that trouble. Uh, and that's it for visualization page. <clears throat> okay. And so, uh, button style quick view. Um, this, I, this I found very interesting and, and was able to do a uh, demonstration rather quickly. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to another page where, notice you'll see I have the edit. Um, actually, it's surprising. Uh, so I am logged in as me. And so what I want to emphasize is the technique that I'm about to show is something you can do today in 7.1. Uh, and then I'll show you what I, what I want to do with it in 7.2. So here I have a page that has a bunch of stamps. You know, I can turn this off and you can see, or edit it, you can see all of these are just stamps. Uh, and there are two quick views on the page. So I have one quick view that affects the facility. Um, so here's Longwood, and I guess I'll also choose Trinity and maybe Springfield. And yeah, sure enough, works exactly as I expected, 
for a dimension quick view. But up here, um, I have a list of measures. Well, at least parts of the measures, right? I have AMI or heart failure, pneumonia, COPD. And so if I change these, what's going to happen is I'm using all the same stamps. But what I'm doing is I'm passing that, uh, that uh, measure or the, 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 the modality, I guess, the, the COPD part to all these stamps on the page, and they're changing. So I think this is a really good way of reusing those stamps, designing a page, right? Because it, at another point, I might have to do this same page five different times, seven different times. I don't necessarily want to do that. Although, uh, visually, I think we can do better, and that's the, really the example here. If I come over to, oops, let me go to my shortcuts. Yeah, readmissions. So here's, here it is in 7.2, uh, and really what's different here is that I'm using uh, my library, and we've added some visual elements, but it's really still the same thing. I have a series of, have a, a series of stamps, I have that same dimension quick view, and I also have this uh, quick view with the, the list of, of, the, um, of the measures. So what I'm going to do is come to this particular quick view, and double click, and you'll see, uh, just in a moment, that this is a flex style quick view, something that we added in 7.1. And now in 7.2, I can change this to a button style quick view. And I still get the option of making this a single selection or a multi-select. In this case, I want it to be a single, really wouldn't work otherwise. So I'm going to click OK, click OK again, and then that's it. So now I have a new UI style. I can say AMI or heart failure, pneumonia or COPD. One page, just using the quick view and moving along very quickly. Yes? For, the, for this particular page, it wouldn't make sense because each one of the measures is, is looking for a single, each one of the stamps is looking for a single measure. But you could come up with a scenario where you would have multi-select and it would pass those values, definitely. Do you have any other questions? Jamie? All right. well, let's, uh, I think there's a couple slides left for details and then we can uh, open up for Oops. anything else. I think that's, oh, oh yeah. It's only the one slide, okay. <laughs> All right, so yeah, um, uh, the, the button style, it works for, um, it, it works for multiple kinds of quick views. One kind of quick view that it works for is dimension quick views. So if you have dimension quick views, you don't have to use this list style that we were showing just now. Um, but you need to be aware that if a dimension has 20 values, then you're gonna get 20 buttons. Uh, you can set the wrap um, level so that you can actually wrap it to multiple lines. But basically, if you have too many buttons, it's just not going to work. And also, if the number of buttons changes on a daily basis, or it, if that quick view is filtered by some other quick view, and this is maybe not as obvious, but like it, then you would, if you change the other quick view, the number of values might change, and you get a different number of buttons. Well, that could change your page layout. And so yeah. that's why it's, it's better to stick with quick views that have a fixed number of values. So, and, and list quick views are, are the prime example there. List quick views we tend to use for things like this where it's a parameter that gets passed to, down to something else, to a C plan, to a stamp, um, and, and for lists, this is just perfect. But it still works for small dimension quick views as well. And so that, that's all of our content, and so now I think we want to open up for any other questions. Uh, oh, okay. So the question is, are we thinking about adding button groups? Yeah. Groups of buttons? No, no, like the, like the main one would be a hospital, or you know, the other would be like, so that you would have, so you click on the, so you see the, the button group, the button there, and then underneath that would be a group of oh. yeah, okay. buttons. Come back over. <laughs> okay, yeah, so the, the um, right. It depends on how dynamic you'd like that to be, right? Uh, certainly you could have two layers, and, and if those two layers are always there, um, what you might do, you might make a C base that has, that uses two dimensions, and 
you set up some dependency between the values in that dimension so that when you choose something on the top, the buttons change below it, right? I mean, you could set that up. You would you'd probably need to make a custom C-base for that to, to make the dependencies work. If it was always the same, if they're basically two independent ones, well, then that's easy with two list quick views. Um, I don't think we want to hook it up to, to make it like really custom, like where you're saying in the quick view portlet, this value has these sub values, right? Because, because that takes away from the kind of abstract concept we want to apply, which is that it doesn't matter where the data comes from, this portlet can show it as a quick view. But yeah, I think, I think with some custom C-based work, we could get that work, get that working. Was there one more? One final. There's another over here. Okay. How about over here? Oh. So the question is about the, the, the my library button, which is the biggest button up here at the top. And you know, you can see these little two little up and down chevrons to the side. No. <clears throat> the question was, does it matter where I click? N and no, it doesn't. That's just one button. It those little icons there, this is part of one of the design mock-ups that we went through. Um, the problem was without the up and down buttons, it was not always clear to users that this is even clickable, right? Is is it just a big label or something? So that's there to kind of help users realize that there's something that if they click they can get to something. But no, there's no other options. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much.